And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Monday, January 3rd, 2022. Very interesting day. Uh, the markets traded in both directions and it does seem that the S&P did come down, put in a new low under what uh, the previous was, which was 40, just barely actually, 47.50, got down to 47.47 and then just started to pretty much launch higher and finishing strongly and at the highs uh, for the session. Now, what that has done for our Elliott count is that I, I labeled the minute wave four here. And so right now here again is the intermediate fourth wave. So if you remember yesterday, I had discussed and showed where I've changed the larger intermediate degree count. And that really does work better and covers cleaner what's actually taking place, I feel. So here we have the intermediate third way finish. Then we have the A, the B, the C. The C ended in a failure. It did not come down and take out the low. At 44.92, it finished at 45.20. Nonetheless, it is a failure, but I'm marking that as the completion point for intermediate wave four. Now we're within the intermediate fifth wave up. This intermediate fifth wave up will complete not only on an intermediate degree, the fifth wave, but on a primary degree, the fifth wave, and then again on the cycle degree, a fifth wave. So we are now still working towards that ultimate top, as I discussed yesterday. But more importantly, I'm going to squeeze that back down and let's just focus on what we're doing within this beginning wave. I'm going to break it back down to the hourly chart. What I can best tell is that I'm counting these as minute waves, which would suggest that wherever this tops out and I'm fairly confident that it will get itself back above 4,800 uh, before completing this first minor wave one. So the only question now will become, uh, will these actually turn into being minor waves? And I'll explain why. As we push higher, we're running into resistance zones that have been thought pretty cleanly to complete the whole greater and larger moves. Now, what I've added to this is this larger move. And again, I need to go back out so that you can see where that all comes in. And what I've done is I've gone in and I had to basically actually go out, I think, to the hour of the weekly chart to find the bottom of wave two, intermediate wave two, connect that to the top of intermediate wave three, bring it back down to the bottom of wave four to get the projections or the extensions for an intermediate fifth wave. They're gonna be out here on the outside. So now let me come back down to the four hour chart. So you can see they're on the outside and then there's another set that's very tight on the inside, which <clears throat> is going to be this minute fifth wave. So let me come down back to the hourly chart. So now here are the minute levels. So right, if I'm counting this as a minute one, two, three, four, we're in a minute wave five, which should then complete a minor first wave. And again, this larger intermediate fifth wave will consist of five waves of minor degree. Now within that first minor degree wave one, there will be five waves of minute degree. So again, the building blocks. And I don't, put, I, 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 a bad habit that I've had in the past and continues to plague me sometimes is that I tend to count too fast. So in other words, one, two, three, four, five, it's a minor degree, we're done. And so I purposely kept it at a minute level so that I can get a clearer view of essentially what needs to be behind this rally, what the power needs to show us. And so, we, that may change because here we have our resistance for the intermediate degree 
move. And that being the case, our first resistance for that level comes in at 48.84. Now, what would that coincide that for this fifth wave, if it got up there, the wave five would be 0.618 of wave three. That fits perfectly. So if I'm thinking that this is where this first wave will end, it would fit and then we get a pullback and then still continue to move higher. So whatever is then going to, I, I would, we would redo Fibonacci, but so let's stick to the ones on the outside. These are the inside, should this really become an extended wave? And if it does, then it could force the count back to being minor degree and this is a finishing rally. So that's the point that we're at where I need the market to move a little bit more and to produce you know, additional upside so that we can really gauge as to what degree this move is going to be. But we do have our extensions for an intermediate degree fifth wave. That would be the first resistance, 48.84. Coming off of that, our next resistance is 0.382, 51.10, I'm gonna call it. That's pretty high. From where we are, that's 300 points. So then we have a 50% level at 52.86. And the 618 is 54.74. So that's the potential for a, in, an intermediate degree fifth wave as it compares to then intermediate third wave. Those are pretty high numbers. But again, per yesterday's discussion, if indeed this is an intermediate degree, then we're looking that this likely may extend out three months or more before the whole picture is complete before this very long-term bull market advance is complete. But we're going to take it day by day. I, I don't want to jump ahead and start saying, oh yeah, we're going to 5,500. I'm saying the potential is there, but the reality is going to come from the market. And that is what I will wait. And then we will move accordingly and chart and label accordingly. So the market is always our key information giver. So right now, let's pull it in and let's talk about tomorrow. It was a decent rally and we still yet haven't broken back above 47.90 to 47.95, which I'd like to see to give me additional confirmation that this thing is not gonna reverse and just head back lower. It still remains until we start to break these upper levels, we still run a risk of this correction still being in force. As you can already see, it's very sloppy, very disjointed, and kind of very difficult to, to count out. So at best, I could say we have an A, B, C, A, a B, and then we're starting the C wave. Wave one of C, Wave two of C, wave one of three of C, wave two of three of C. Now, what would that suggest? That we come in tomorrow and we're down here. Instead of continuing the rally, the rally fails again and drops. If it breaks and can clear 47.91, that's a good sign. If it can clear 47.95, that's a good sign. If it can clear 47.99 to 4,800, best and clear sign we could get. So again, we're not talking major amount of points here. We're talking 15, 16 points to the high, to 4,800. And with the S&P putting in a solid rally of 26 points, 26 plus points today, that's re a realistic number that could be achieved tomorrow. But we need to see the buyers continue to move into the market 
for positioning to continue. And it was kind of back and forth, a lot of back and forth today, where the majority of a lot of tech stocks were being pumped up, which includes Tesla, uh, Google, basically a little bit, Facebook a little bit, but the bigger players, Amazon, Am AMAC, Advanced Micro, and Apple. Apple surpassed $3 trillion in, in uh, value today. The uh, <clears throat> market cap, $3 trillion. So first company in the United States, it's an international, et cetera, et cetera. And I have done some um, analysis on Apple, and it really does suggest that like the NASDAQ, which it is the primary member of, um, it should move to additional new highs above what we're seeing, closer above 190, possibly even 200 before all is said and done. Now that takes place, it's going to bring up a lot of other stocks along with it, and the indexes should easily begin to break above these levels and get to the business of finishing this very long-term advance. So for tomorrow, I cannot rule out this reverses again and drops back down. If it does, we need to watch and pay attention to these. That's the four, that's the eight, that's the 20, that's the 50. More important for a move down, a break below the 20 and a break below the 50 should produce this. A solid round of get out of the way, we're selling. Now this happened early, this was the opening. Rallied, came back to give it a test and then just rallied for the balance of the day. So here, if it pulls back to the four, it's just a small little corrective phase. And then we're looking again for it to break above 91, again for it to break above 95 and then 99.75 or 48. That's what we need to see for upside continuation. Otherwise, a break below these levels would suggest once again, that we're likely gonna be heading down towards the 200, the hourly 200, which is at 47.43 with potential for a drop all the way back to 47.11, which was support, Fibonacci support, for a fourth wave collection. I've removed it after today's activity, but it's still, it's still there. I'm just not showing it because it tends to clog up the chart. So here's our scenario. Pullback should be shallow. A break below the 20 and the 50 will open the gate for a continued slide at least likely to 47.42 with potential down to 47.11. But of course, this has to break cleanly and the hourly chart, you need an hourly close below 47.43 for it to suggest 47.11. Upside, the market needs to continue the rally with strength, get itself above 47.91, get itself above 47.95, get itself about 47 or 4,800. First resistance sits right there, 4,801, we'll call it. Then we have 4,834, 4,860. Now again, we're looking for a fifth wave to be complete. Where do I think that should come in? Well, 382.50, but 618, for the fifth wave comes in at 48.87. That would be pretty powerful, but it is possible and it's possible to do it all in one day. It would mean a hundred point rally from pretty much current levels. The s and has gotten pretty dang close to doing that on several times previously, both up and down. So these moves are not out of the realm of reality. It can happen. And then remember, then once that's done, if I'm going to label it minor wave one, we can set the stage for what expectations would be and again, be able to tighten up the count in terms of degree. So again, upside, 
We need to break above 47.91. We need to break above 95. We need to break above 4,800. There's first resistance, second resistance, third resistance. I'm looking for the completion point of this fifth wave. So I'm gonna be looking to count five waves. This doesn't seem like very much. In fact, this seems like ABC up to that high. And if that's the case, it's not gonna go up. It's gonna go down. But if it can get itself up and produce a nice little five wave up, then we're on the start of a fifth wave or the entire fifth wave. We shall see. Continue to play accordingly. Use the price action. Have the correct mindset. We began a discussion about that yesterday. That will continue. Your mindset is important to block out exterior noise, market noise. Well, this is moving, that's moving. We're focused on an index which encompasses 500 stocks. And when we're having moves where possibly seven, five to seven or 10 of those stocks are in control of the upside move, it's not healthy, but it does fit into the position of where, this, where the S&P is. We're in a finishing rally, a finishing intermediate degree, primary degree, cycle degree rally. So it's gonna get sloppy as the market continues to push, but we hopefully will get bigger participation from more of the component stocks within the S&P. Now, continue to use moving averages, continue to use this Fibonacci resistance, but stay close to your price action. Price action on the bars is gonna dictate what's really going on, the strength coming in from either side. So pay attention here as well, not that when the market gets overbought, does it necessarily mean it's gonna flip and fall immediately, but it does begin to suggest that we should get some pullbacks. And so again, from here, I, I would think that this pullback needs to hold these moving averages, at least the four and the eight. So maybe down to 47, 78 ish and then pick up the rally again and get itself up there above these highs and get it above 4,800 to put a little bit better picture together that the rally is still complete and this fourth wave is done. So that's what I'll be looking for for tomorrow's action. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Our next update will be on Tuesday the 4th.